Hello guys and welcome back to Comment and it's time for another tutorial and today we are going to create that you can have a countdown timer or whatever you want to call it. So what we're going to do here is just setting up the scene so you can fast by the way I do this with a right click you always use that to add or create something and also add a text. Here we are just going to create a little bit bigger um, ju just so you guys can see it. Uh, here, right click, create C Sharp script, and call it countdown. Or final countdown, I don't know what you want. Anyway, here we got uh, three lines which declare which uh, packages you can use. And we need to work with UE because we need to set the text of the UE. So we are going to put here using Unity Engine dot UE. Um, so now here we are going to declare three variables. The very first one is a public text. And that's why we need it unity engine.ue uh, time text. And don't forget the capitals. And here we've got a public float timestamp. And we also need a public pool using timer. So we're just going to put it on false right now. The timestamp is the time where the timer will end. And the using timer will just see if you already well called like the last action. For example, if you have a bomb that it is exploded after the 30 seconds or whatever. So we're going to create a few ver uh, functions. The very first one is public void set timer. And we're going to put here a variable called float time. So what we're going to do here is just set the timestamp. But before we're going to do that, we're first going to put an if statement. If you are using the timer, we want to return. Because if you already got a timer, you don't want uh, the same timer on this object. And there's probably a mistake or something, so we can also do our debug.log just between here where there's an error or whatever you want to say there to make sure that you don't use uh, two things on the same timer. And here we're going to say that the timestamp is time.time. .time. So that's the current time plus the time we want to add. So for example, if you want a countdown of 30 seconds, you just fill in here 30 seconds. We only want a little bit of a shorter one. Uh, this, by the way, in the start function is just to test it. Uh, we just want to have one of three seconds. This is, by the way, in seconds and always the time itself in Unity is within seconds. Uh, at least the default one, if you're going to change it, it can be a little bit different. A public void uh, set UE text is going to be the next function and here we are actually going to let it show on um, the screen what your current time is and how much time you got left. Before we're going to do that we first going to uh, make a function to make sure that the time we got and time left we got uh, is going to be divided within hours, minutes, seconds and milliseconds and if you want to have days within it you can just change it a little bit that function but that's all the reason we put this into a function and not just put it directly here is because most games if they use like a countdown or whatever and you want to show it on the screen you also want to show it on the uh well finish screen or whatever you want to call it uh, with like new high score and so on so a public void get time values and we need a few variables for that so first of all of course a float time so this is the time we got then we want us output so we put out float hours out float minutes out float seconds out float milliseconds so now we've got all our variables. If you want more variables, of course, you can just add it right here. Uh, just think of it that in most games you don't need days, so we're not going to add it. And we just do that hours, so you can just see how we can just add one towards 
the normal uh, time things, uh, timer. So here we are going to say that hours is going to be int. So that makes sure we round it towards a nice value with no decimals and, and so on. Time divided by 3600. So this is the normal number for that. Uh, this is just a simple calculation. If you don't know what this uh, exact number means, you probably should go back to your uh, to school or whatever, or you should just search it on Google, because that's very basic. Uh, minutes, of course, uh, this is almost the same. If we going to put this right here uh, and divide it by 60, you would say it will work. But we also already removed here all the hours from it. So, for example, if you got one hour and 30 uh, minutes and you would just leave it here, it will just uh, stand on the screen as one hour and 90 minutes. So what we're going to do here is just remove the hours from it. So minus the hours multiplied by 3600. And now we can just copy it and do the seconds. So we're just going to change this to seconds. Seconds, exactly the same, the time minus the hours minus the minutes of course because we already removed from the time the minutes uh, multiplied by 60 and we can remove this because time itself is within seconds so the seconds doesn't really need um, multi um, we don't need to multiply the amount of seconds then we've got milliseconds and this is int and here we're going to say that it is exactly the same as here again, except we are also going to remove the seconds. And we don't need to multiply it again, because uh, for the reason I just said here, and we're going to multiply this, the minus seconds, by 10. Or 100, if you want two decimals, that just depends. Um, so now we've got like, uh, we split out the time into hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds, and we can go into the set UE text. So first, we're going to see uh, what the time left is. And the time left is, of course, the timestamp minus the time dot time. So now we've got now how much time there is left, and we can put an if statement. And we're not going to do anything here right now in inside the if statement. We're going to do that at the end of this tutorial. But basically, if time left is smaller or equal to zero, we want to end this and we just want to move on with our lives. Or actually, with the function. So now we got a few variables. Uh, float hours. So we need to split the time left out. Float, float minutes. The float seconds. The float milliseconds, and we're just going to put it within our get time values, and we can just say time left hours minutes seconds and milliseconds. And also, uh, I've got it right here. We need to put an out because we want to get it from the function. So just put everywhere out. Then the last thing we're going to do in this function is to make sure that whenever you've got hours, you only want to show hours and minutes, and you don't want to show minutes and seconds. But if you've got only uh, seconds left, you don't want to show how many hours you've got. Um, why the hell would you want to know that? So what we're going to do here is we're going to do a few if statements to make sure that whenever you've got hours, the hours will be on the screen, and whenever you, um, the maximum amount is the amount of uh, minutes, only your minutes and seconds will be on the screen, and so on. I hope that's clear for everyone. So how we're going to do this is, if hours is more than one, uh, zero, we are going to say time text dot text is equal to string dot format. And what this does is very simple. It will change. Uh, you can just put here, right here, a string, and here you can just declare a variable, you do that like this. So you always start with zero and then the next one, uh, for example, 
we want a double point, then here is going to be 1, 0, 1, and you can just go on forever. I always start with 0 if you're using string format. And uh, we can just put here the variables. So we want here the hours and the minutes. We don't need to do to string because string format will automatically do that for you. Then here we've got an else if, what basically means if the hours aren't more than uh, zero, but the minutes are, we want to show the minutes and the amount of seconds. So we could just go here and we just change this to minutes and this towards seconds. Then the last thing we want to make sure that whenever uh, it isn't, we want to show the seconds and milliseconds. And some people will say, we can just put here an else if and then an else whenever it's milliseconds and just show the milliseconds uh, only on the screen. But that will basically mean that whenever it's less than one second, you will just change it towards for one second, only for one second towards the milliseconds. And I am from the opinion that that's just well, only one second is just um, not enough time to actually just change the whole layout. So for me, I would just, after the minutes, if there was um, less than a minute, I would just always do the, um, that's, you will only show the seconds, oops, and the milliseconds. So now we've got uh, here everything just done. And now we're going to create here a new function because we want to do something whenever uh, you run out of time. So for example, public void finish action. I don't know what uh, you want to call this. For example, finish level or explode uh, explosion or, or whatever you want to do. We are just going to put here a debug lock. Boom. From an explosion or whatever you want to put here. Uh, this is just for a test, but there are two things you always need to put within this function. The very first one is to make sure that the time text, the text is going to look, well, just normal again. Uh, you can do this on two ways. You can just empty it out so you don't see anything anymore at the top of the screen. Or what you can do is just put here uh, two zeros and also here a double zero, um, but it's your, just your choice. And then um, using timer will also be in false. Those two lines are very important. If you don't use this, uh, those two, you will get some, uh, it will just don't look pretty for the player. So of course we're going to put this right here. So finish action. And we're going to put here that we want to return, which basically means we don't want to do anything that's after this line within this function. So we're just skipping this whole part, which basically means we don't put it on the screen anymore. So we already set the timer in the update. We can just say if using the timer, we are just going to set the U text. If this isn't, we don't need to worry about this whole function. Um, in a set timer, I see I've got something. We also need to make sure that we can use the timer. So using timer is going to be true. Now we're going to uh, hit on the play button and see if it will work. Um, of course, we need to uh, add a script towards uh, an empty or the main camera for now. We're just going to put it on the main camera. Just, well, why not? <laughs> so you're going to put a countdown. Uh, you're just going to assign the text we just created and hit on play. And we'll see it will um, count down from 3. And when it hits 3, it will just say here, boom. And it will make sure that here is it's just on the right format. So it isn't looking ugly with um, minus and things like that. So I really hope you guys liked it. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.